All right, hey, uh, we've got a little different program for today, and uh, this is in uh, answering the question that I get asked all the time. Uh, and you guys know that I'm a big fan of this uh, polypropylene macrame yarn uh, because it's so buoyant, and uh, um, I often like to mix the colors of these materials. Um, and so people have asked me how I go about doing that. So I'm going to show you uh, from from start to finish. Um, I'm not sure how long this will take because uh, – um, it's kind of a boring process, but you'll get the idea. We might uh, speed it up or, or uh, cut it along the way, depending on how long it goes. But um, what I'm going to start off with is a, um, this is a piece of smoke-colored uh, polypropylene macrame yarn. We sell this here at the shop, and uh, um, it comes in a in a braid, in a rope. Um, and I think that's one of the keys to it, um, is because it's got that crinkle to it. It doesn't uh, unfurl um, just in straight fibers. It's got some some wave to it. Um, but to start off with, what I'll do is, you know, pick uh, whatever colors you want to mix and cut, you know, several well, a piece of each that, that are all about the same length. Um, and then uh, a wire dog brush um, works great for doing this. And you can see this, this brush um, has been well used. He's got uh, a little extra left in there. Um, but what I'll do is I'm going to start toward one end here, um, and I'll tell you a little trick that I figured out over over time. Before I start brushing, um, what I want to do is I want to pull just one of those strands out. Um, so I've just taken, taken one out. And what that does is it loosens the weave up a little bit, um, so it's a little easier to brush out. Um, so I'm going to pull that out and set it aside. I'll put it back in eventually, but um, what that does is it makes it easier to kind of start to get this uh, shredded apart. Um, and this this brush, particularly if I hold it just like that, is directional. Um, so I want to kind of brush toward the end. I find myself doing it sideways a lot. Um, and it doesn't seem to work as well. So um, those those uh, bristles have a direction. Um, and I'm working from, from the end toward the middle to brush that out. And you can see I'll just flip it over and brush it out. And you can see how much yarn uh, there is in a bundle of this stuff. Um, so once I get to the middle of that clump, I'll turn it around and do the same thing on the other end. And work toward the middle again. Um, once I get there, then I can kind of grab below that middle section and get that last little bit that I was that I was hanging on to. And there I've got a pretty well brushed out clump. Now I still got this other piece and I'd, I'd go through and throw that in there and keep brushing that. Um, but just to save you the time, I'll skip that step for right now. Uh, so there's my, there's my smoke. Um, got a piece of orange here. Um, I'm just going to brush this out too. Um, and I did not pull the strand out. So, um, you see how that is not coming apart nearly as easily. If I pull a strand out, um, loosen that weave up a bit. This will go a lot more easily. And, you know, sometimes as you're brushing this, you'll get um, a little knit or a tangle. Um, just kind of work on that tangle. If you have to, even go in with your scissors and, and cut it out um, just so that you can push that, that twist out like that right there. Um, that one's actually not too bad. I'll just set them back in there. And I'll come around here on the other side and do the same thing again. Um, I don't really need to show you this step twice. I just want to mix some of this orange. I think I'm going to do, well, we'll, we'll mix several colors just to, uh, just to make this sort of fun for you. Um, you can see how this one's got, this clump's got maybe a few more little knits in it as I go. There we go, getting the right direction with the brush. That's a nice color. Got a nice salmon fly orange on that one. Like so. Um, so now, to, to start to mix these, what I'll do um, is kind of take whatever my primary color is going to be, and let, let's say it's going to be gray in this case, um, and I'll take this clump, and, and what I typically do with it is I'll kind of take this brush um, and flatten that clump out a bit, like so, into, into a sheet. Um, and then I'll take my, my secondary colors, Need a little more brushing on this orange. There we go. And I'll grab this clump, and I'm just going to grab a few strands at a time and just kind of come along and stack them on top of this 
first bunch. Um, and keep in mind, your secondary colors are, are you know, obviously secondary colors. So um, if you get too carried away, you're going to have, you know, a pretty even mix. It just uh, And that's fine, too. Uh, just kind of keep in mind what you're, what you're aiming for. So I'll put a little orange in there. Um, I've got some tan here as well um, that I've already brushed out. So I'm just going to grab a clump here. You can see I just peel that out and lay it on top of that stack. You want to kind of avoid... Uh, any knots or tangles you've got in there. And this is, you know, I admit, this is a somewhat time-consuming process. Um, I usually do this all ahead of time. I, I uh, always joke that I do this during Bronco games, um, especially this year, because it was not terribly exciting to watch those poor guys, but uh, um, you can kind of get the idea of what I'm doing. Um, I do find that I like to add a darker color into most of these mixes just for some uh, venation. Um, so I'm going to take... Um, some black, and this clump of black is maybe a little short, um, but I'll make it work. Um, so I'm just going to take a little bit of black and kind of sprinkle this on top. Trying to get a, a fairly even layer. Um, like so. So we've got our little stack. Um, now what I'll do is I will take this and flip this over. So it's gray side up, and then I'll just start to roll this up. Like so. Into a neat little bundle. Um, and you've got a decent mix as it sits right there. Um, but if you kind of brush this out, you can see there's some stripes in there. Um, and what we want is a much more even mix. Um, so then what I'll do is take this clump, and, and the same thing we just did. I'm just going to start to peel out from the ends. Just randomly grab handfuls of this, um, and it's, you know, it's, I say handful, that's, that's a, a fairly small pinch of each material. And I'm not really trying to, uh, you know, pick one color over the other. You know, ideally this, this bunch will be fairly well mixed together, but I'm just going to peel some of these out. Um, and I'll just do this over and over again until I get um, a nice even mix. And you can see my black is clumping up a little bit. Um, sometimes if you get a, a section that's particularly black, kind of put it someplace where there's not already some black. And the ultimate idea here is that you're going to, to have a nice even mix and distribution of, of all those colors in the clump. Uh, one thing that you want to be aware of is don't pull too hard on this. You don't want to straighten these fibers. Um, you can see they've got a nice crinkle to them. Uh, so you want them to, to maintain that crinkle. That's what adds so much flotation to this material. Um, you know, polypropylene is inherently waterproof, um, but that crinkle is what gives the surface area to your fly uh, that makes this stuff float so well. And uh, we want to keep that crinkle in there as much as we can. And you can see I'll just I'm right down to the last little bits of that. So I'll kind of throw that around. I'll roll that bunch up again. Maybe hit them with the brush a time or two. I've still got a, a few little stripes in there. And you can kind of get to a point where you're looking at your, at your bunch and you're saying, you know, I want it to be uh, a little lighter, or a little darker, or, you know, a little more orange uh, color to it. And you can kind of sprinkle in other colors. Um, but you get the idea. And, you know, at this point, honestly, on this bunch, I would I would mix it again. I would just start pulling fibers out one more time. You can see I'm just kind of making a sheet with this. I'm trying to keep those fibers aligned. But with this, this mixing method, you can make, uh, you know, really, really any color that you can imagine. Um, this stuff comes in so many colors that are the single colors. Um, and by cutting and brushing and mixing, you can, you can make all sorts of different tones, um, that match up to, uh, you know, any critter that you, that you might want to. Um, just be patient with it. And very often you'll end up here in, in your left hand, you'll end up with sort of a, a big wadded tangle that's left over at the end. Um, and I usually just throw that right straight in the trash um, or I give it to Max at the shop. Max likes that kind of thing. Um, I don't know if he's figured out what to do with it yet, but um, that's sort of my 
my little gift for Max. Um, but there's our, there's our little mixed up batch, um, like so. I'll take that and roll it up. Just kind of get that in a nice, neat little bundle. And you can take and put that, you know, right into a, uh, a Ziploc bag or, uh, you know, run the brush through it a couple more times, spread it out. Um, just admire your handiwork. Um, I know how you guys are. And, you know, if you really wanted to get fancy, you could take a zip tie around the center here and make this into a neat little hank, like so. And you got a great little bundle to do, oh, I don't know, 10 dozen wings on, on a big fat Angie or something like that. Um, so you can see a, a little bit of time gives you a pile of materials. Um, and, uh, gosh, you don't have much money in that little little bundle either. Um, but that's how I go about mixing that macrame yarn. I hope that helped. If, uh, if you guys have any questions, you know, know where to find us there at the shop. Um, thanks for watching. I'm Charlie Craven. You guys take care.